Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer Kickstarter board game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is called Zombie Legacy, and as you would imagine, it is a legacy type game. It's for two to five player, it takes about 60 to 90 minutes per game with multiple, multiple games in it, and it's for, um, I don't know, at 12, 13 and up. In the game, you're gonna be playing as post-apocalyptic slash zombie uh, survivors in this crazy world, and your objectives are going to differ depending on mission to mission to mission. Luckily for us though, we we have Gordon Ramsay and the number seven who have come back from time after playing the first mission to explain to us how the game works. Unfortunately, it would disrupt the space-time continuum to explain any more than that, and because of that, it might change how the way um, in which you'd be playing the game yourself. We won't be doing that, but they are going to go ahead and instruct us about how to set the original game up, as well as kind of how the games we played for the first aspects of it, and then what is likely to be um, upcoming in the future for the game Zombie Legacy. Well, anyway, let's go ahead and take a look at the board and all of the components of the game, and then up here again, and we'll talk about how it is played. So here we have Zombie Legacy and almost all of the components. Of course, there's additional stuff as well as additional legacy components, but this is enough for the base uh, first portion of the game, the legacy deck one, and the additional packs, and what might happen when a hero dies and other kind of stuff like that. So let's go ahead and go over the components really quick. Then we're gonna go ahead and discuss the setup of the game as well as character creations. So first of all, uh, in this scenario, there's going to be these additional cards you're gonna be adding to this deck here, and I'll explain that later, uh, a little bit later. We're also gonna have the board here, which is going to show you where you're going to place all these as well and then you're going to have this stack of cards here these are the zombie encounters whatever zombies move into place people's spaces you're going to have, go ahead and flip that over and see what happens you've got your player reference aids you've got your unique objectives which are going to be in yellow and this is of course food and water here you got your characters which we have went ahead and set up already which i have talked about before in the number seven and mr gordon ramsay and we've also got over here these are luck we've got a tracker which is going to be used for zombie fury tracker that started off was, was going to be the Base, and then it'll go to the more advanced version and so on and so forth. This is gonna determine how many dice the zombie roll throughout the game. You're gonna have all of these little tokens and chits here. Uh, they're gonna be weapons, they're gonna be survivors you're gonna be using, as well as the characters. And uh, depending on what, how the game works, might be miniatures or not, I don't know. Uh, but you're also gonna get these colored bases to distinguish between the characters. Throughout the game, you might be getting new rules in which you're gonna actually add them to the rule book itself. But for right now, we're gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and set it over here. Um, you've also got this stack of tiles here and you have objective cards cards here, which are going to tell you what you need to do throughout the game. So let's go ahead and talk about character creation. So I'm going to take this off and put it right here in the middle for us to see. Um, and much, much like another legacy game, you actually get some cool stuff like stickers here. You need to go ahead and select a character. This male here will select him and you go ahead and take his sticker off and then you're going to get to have a chance to place it on the board here, just like that. You're also going to get the opportunity to choose a luck skill. You can choose any one you want. I just have a couple here to choose from, but there's many more you can choose from the actual game. And we'll go ahead and put that right there. You also have the ability to choose a weapon, which is going to be, uh, for us, we're going to be using this uh, this dagger here, or this, uh, I, should, I should say, uh, knife. And you go ahead and take that off. I can't get the sticky stuff to work, but it'll go right there. And then um, you're gonna go ahead and get to do something cool, which is gonna be the apocalypse uh, portion of the game. You're gonna get the family life and the job and his morals. And you're gonna get to choose from a variety of them, uh, but I just went ahead and chose some already. So this character here, he is starved, beaten, and forced into slavery. Uh, Blank saw the true face of evil as the zombies rose. Oh no, uh, the family aspect is here. He's a loner with few friends and uh, no family. He was He's come to rely on himself and prefers his own company. And then we got his job here. It says, uh, research uh, released from prison early in the outbreak. His skills as a getaway driver were legendary in the underbelly of the city. And finally, we have the morals here, which is gonna be, he forms strong lasting bonds with people and always has their interests at heart. Interesting, it's kind of like a convict that cares. <laughs> and then after that, we've gone ahead and stuck all this stuff on. You can go ahead and name him and write down his name over here. And of course, throughout the game, this will be changing. You'll be adding new things to it. But that's gonna be the basic idea of create, create, player creation. And everybody is gonna get a chance to do that. Uh, then you're gonna go ahead and look for the setup aspect of the game, which is this legacy deck here. And you're only gonna open it when it tells you to open it. So read the rules to begin with, and then after you've read the rules, it'll tell you what to do throughout the game. And so it says legacy one, read front and back. It says stop, don't do this until you're ready to begin the game. Flip it, read the story, which I don't wanna give away. It also tells you how to set up the board. This is basically where all the different pieces are going to go. And then on the other side, it gives you more uh, strategy uh, as well as storyline. 
Then you're gonna go to episode one and it'll tell you to separate the different assets here and it'll tell you to take them and put them into three, put the tile deck into three stacks. Go ahead and pick each one of these assets and shuffle them in into each of the tile decks so that you don't know where they're gonna be in each stack here. And then you're gonna go ahead and put the stacks on top of each other just like this. So that way you're gonna have all three of the different components throughout the deck which make the game last a little longer and uh, make everything more balanced and fair. You would also do the same for this deck. There's a thing called a horde card, which is somewhere in here. Let's see if I can find it really quick. This one right here, there's gonna be three of them. You're gonna separate the deck into three space, three sets, and then you do the same. I've already gone ahead and done that already. So we're gonna set that up there. You're also going to go ahead and make sure the board is set up and also adding all of the tokens that are necessary to add to the board such as the characters here are going to be actual allies, and you're going to get uh, to put the knife there, or any weapon of your choice if you want, but we'll just go ahead and select the knife. And um, you're also going to put zombies down, and zombies are gonna be on every space um, that the specific rules tell you to place them on. And luckily I've already gone ahead and set the zombies, so you can just go ahead and place them. These spots here are going to be the spawners, which will spawn zombies just like that, and then the characters are going to go here. And then after that, you will have some interesting things throughout the game. Let's see, um, yeah, episode one setup. You got motivations, and these are secrets that you don't get to actually read unless you're the character that has the specific motivation. If we were to look back at our other character here, he's got C, H, M, and T. So he's going to get M and M and I think there might be, no, it's just out of those. And so other players might get these, otherwise they're gonna get discarded. He's gonna get this, he's gonna be able to look at it, and he's gonna be able to read it. And I can't tell you what it is, but I can say that he might be very good with different vehicles. And so that is going to be useful. Sometimes they're gonna interact throughout the game, uh, during, during the game, after the game, at the very beginning of the game. It just depends on which motivation you get based on the cards you choose. So these things here are actually useful throughout the game and will make a difference. After that, you've got your characters here, and um, you got these things set up. Whenever you draw these, they're gonna go onto the board there. Make sure everything's within reach and able to be used, and pretty much uh, give yourself whatever luck it tells you to give you. Different characters are gonna tell you what luck to give you, and the game is ready to begin. Let's go ahead and talk about a couple turns and how the game works. So as you could tell, the game is gonna be set up differently every single time you play it. It is a legacy game, so as you play the game, things are gonna be discarded, ripped up, or removed from the game completely. Your characters could die, and if, die, if the character does die, something interesting might happen, and uh, you're gonna continue playing the game. Sometimes if you win, you'll have a certain benefit. Sometimes if you lose, you'll have a certain negative effect. It just really depends on each scenario, as well as what you're trying to do. Now, I'm gonna try and not give you any story elements if possible, but the idea is you're gonna need resources through the game. You're going to need to do certain um, objectives and accomplish certain tasks throughout the game as well. As you see, you've got legacy decks here, you've got different packs, you've got different boxes, and you're gonna be opening these things up throughout the game for different reasons, usually involving your motivations, or sometimes involving a card that is drawn, sometimes involving a location that is uh, fulfilled or completed, or even if you land on a specific location. We went through character building, and of course, here's a bunch of characters here that you can choose from, and of course, you have injuries, as well as sustaining wounds beforehand. Injuries are actually almost permanent, but can be removed depending on the scenario and what you're doing. You're going to have all these different motivations you can go ahead and use based on the number of players for males and for females, as well as a track that is going to change and get more and more difficult as the game progresses. If you lose one of the games, you're going to have to simply restart it, and usually it'll become a little easier the next time you do, until eventually you're probably going to beat it. If not, well then, uh, maybe it's not the game for you. However, uh, after you've gone ahead and set everything up, as I have explained to you, you're going to begin the game. And luckily for us, we have a player action card as well as a zombie turn card. They're player reference cards here. And the first thing you're going to do is move, then you're going to perform in combat, and then you're going to collect whatever is on the tile in, uh, uh, well, that you're on top of. After you have done that, then all of your um, allies have done that as well, you're going to then have these zombies go. And the zombies are going to move one space towards the nearest hero, hero with the most survivors here, and it's got this kind of explanation as to how they move, as well as turning a uh, zombie a quarter turn, basically to signify that they've moved to that turn, and finally they're going to do combat. And combat is resolved in, interestingly enough as well. You're going to actually be taking a card from this encounter deck and doing what it says. Some of them are going to have a combat value on the top right hand corner and others are going to have just something you're going to get afterwards or you might get that along with the encounter. Other times you might actually get something just straight up that's really good or maybe find something that's uh, very very powerful and very useful. But most of the time it's going to be dangerous. Also when you go ahead and do these encounters you're actually going to move the zombie fury track along the board 
reward. And as you do that, the zombies are going to get more and more difficult until, vic until basically the point where the zombies are almost impossible to defeat. So you better complete the scenario before doing that. If you can complete the scenario before the zombies end up killing you all, then congratulations, you can move on to the next. So let me go ahead and show you a couple uh, turns for this specific uh, first scenario of the game, along with a little bit of what our objective is kind of going to be, and how the zombies function and how the heroes function as well. And then after that, we'll go ahead and talk about what I think about it without giving any spoilers away. So we're back to the setup of the game, and just to let you know, what you need to do is complete the objectives, which are going to be over here, depending on which uh, scenario you're playing. This one specifically is to find resources and uh, end the game before the encounter deck runs out. So this encounter deck right here, as well as don't get incapacitated. If all your characters are incapacitated, the game is going to end as well. And we got everything set up and made sure all the characters are out again. And once again, returning to us from time, we have number seven and Gordon Ramsay, as well as our new character, Major Pain. Thank you guys for helping me create that one there. I've got our luck token specifically for the game. We're going to add, everybody's going to get two luck for this one specifically, but it's going to change. Everything changes in these legacy style games. So after that, we got our extra characters over here and all of our legacy stuff we pushed to the side. Now we're going to go ahead and begin turns. So the first thing we're going to go ahead and do is take a look at our player action, right? And we're going to go ahead and choose a player. Let's go ahead and start with, I don't know, we'll start with Major Pain here. And he is going to have two speed. Speed is right there, so that means that he can move twice. Uh, and he'll start. So he's going to go ahead and go right here. And he's going to go ahead and take one from the top and place it down. Sometimes you're going to have these black walls here, which means that only zombies can go through them. Or red walls where players can't go through them, but zombies can. Or even green walls where players can go through them, but zombies cannot. Uh, he's going to have another turn here. Maybe he'll go this way. And yet another one of these is going to pop. Now, here we go. See, we have a blade, an area that cannot be crossed here, which means that he's going to basically bump into it, lose a movement, and he's going to stop where he is. After that, combat is going to initiate or if he walks into a space with a zombie combat will initiate and finally pick up anything on the space but there isn't anything to pick up You're usually going to pick up stuff when and uh, luckily if there is a little uh, little thing here denoting like maybe an ally or a gun or something like that but he's test turn is basically over with now the next player is going to get a chance to go we're going to look at the number seven over here and he is simply going to go ahead and move his speed which is two as well one and we got that. Make sure you always orientate these guys in the exact way. Like always the, the little symbols are going to be in the top left hand corner. And let's go ahead and go another one too. And there we go, just like that. That's nice. We got all the stuff on the bottom there, so we don't have to worry about it. Finally, the combat, nothing. And then we have the collecting, which is nothing. Next, we're going to go with Mr. Gordon Ramsay. And we're going to move him one. And then we're going to go ahead and move him two as well. And something else. Okay, so that is it. All the players have went ahead and taken their turns. The next aspect is going to be the zombie turn actions. Moving one towards the closest player. And here's the interesting thing. If the player has the most survivors, which is going to be down here, they're going to move towards them if it's a tie. Finally, if, it, then if, they are, if everybody has a tie, then it's the hero with the most dice, which is going to be the weapons up here, and then the hero with, um, I don't know. It, it, oh, sorry. Th then after that, it's going to be based on whether or not the zombies are too dumb to know. If you don't really know, then neither do the zombies, is the basic rules of the game. So go ahead and move the zombies. They're closest to this guy, he's closer to this guy. Um, he's going to be closest to this guy. And when you do move them, make sure you turn them to the side, indicating that they've gone ahead and moved for the game. And always remember to check to make sure zombies can move where they're, suppo where they're supposed to move. Sometimes they won't be able to based on uh, random random little things on the board. But they've went ahead and moved. Pretty simple. Uh, here we go. The t you know, turn the zombies a quarter and then attack the hero that has the, with the most survivors. But there's no, he there's no heroes they can attack yet. So then once again, the heroes are going to continue to go. And let's go ahead and show you a little bit of combat. So we'll go ahead and start again with Major Pain here. One and then two. If he can, we'll see. Oh, one. Nope, that stops him there. But luckily there's going to be an ally there, which is nice. And then he's going to move over here for two. That's going to end his turn. And then once again, the number seven is going to go one. Let's see what happens here. Ooh, that's a knife. I like knives. And go ahead and place that there. He actually could move another, but he's not going to because this is too useful. He's going to take this knife, and as long as he doesn't have one on his board over here, he's going to gain that for combat, which normally you're going to have one die per weapon. So now he's going to have two dice to roll against zombies. So he's now going to be done. And then finally, we're going to follow it up with Mr. Ramsay. He will move right here. Come on, come on. We got a knife here as well. He can't resist a knife as well. And he's going to pick that up as well. So he's now got two dice as well. And so that is going to end everybody's movement once again. Now remember, they're trying to go around the board to find the different um, resources in this deck here. And as they do that, oh, also don't forget, after the zombies move, you have to respawn more zombies. And the way you do that is going to be putting over here. 
I don't forget to do that. That's very important. Okay, now that's been now that's been had. I also have them all turned to the correct order. But then now it's gonna be the zombies' turn. So we go ahead and flip over the thing again and show the zombies moving. And the zombies are all going to close to the closest player. Boop and boop, and pretty simple. It's nice and easy to move these. And there we go. So now now we have Blue here who is going to initiate combat. So we have the number seven here, I believe. Yep. And the way it happens when you initiate combat with a zombie, you're going to take a card from the encounter deck and read it. It's got a combat of plus three. And if you win, add two survivor tokens to your player mat or place them on the board. So we'll place that there. We check to see how many dice the zombie have, which is over here on this tracker here. It says one die. And then we're also going to add the uh, bonus of three. So we roll this six, seven, eight, nine. And then we're going to go ahead and look at Mr. Uh, Mr. Seven. He's got two dice with no bonuses. And he's got 11. That's going to beat this one out, which is good. We wanted to beat that. Otherwise, we're going to have to suffer damage. And then we're going to move this zombie fury tracker up. And he's going to gain his two survivor tokens if he can. Otherwise, they'll be put on the board. So he can, luckily. It's going to give him bonuses to his rolls, which is very nice. But not only do you go ahead and get, he's going to go ahead and get these, he's also going to go ahead and get luck every single time. So after you move this uh, Fury Tracker over, you're going to get luck for each time you enter combat and defeat it. And luck is going to be used for abilities on the bottom here. This guy says for two luck, he can add a used card to the deck. And for this way here, it says he can pay two to pass through a barrier or three to redraw um, the re or replace rejected tiles. Now, of course, these guys have already uh, been through time. This guy's the only one that's actually uh, for this scenario, but they have more and more abilities. So you can see that you're going to gain more abilities as you go throughout the game, but uh, not in the original base game. It's just going to look more like this. But nevertheless, this guy is going to be removed. And after he is removed, then uh, every day of the zombie has moved. We're going to go ahead and add more and respawn more of the zombies here. And there we go. And then the game is going to continue. Obviously, as you go around the board, you'll eventually be going to be finding something like this, which is water. You're going to place that on the board here as an objective. And then you can end your turn, put it on your mat. And then when you go back, you can return it if you would like as well to this space over here. And of course, this one just says returning these and having at least one guy come back is going to get you the win. Uh, provided there's nothing crazy like motivations that are going to assert you in different ways or make you do different things. And uh, of course, you can take damage. We'll talk about damage as well. If let's say that um, number seven here, he didn't win that role. Well, what would happen is, first of all, if he has survivors, he's going to lose one for every fight he loses. And when he does that, it's going to remove a benefit. So this is plus three to his role. So it's, it's two dice with a plus three. So if he went ahead and fought in combat, he'd roll these two, and that's going to give him 10 plus 3, which is 13, fighting a zombie. And if a zombie had a plus 3 card and he had this, which was 12, which would be 15, he would lose, but a good guy would lose one of these. If at any point you have no survivors and you take damage, what's going to be interesting is you're going to gain a uh, one of these guys here, an injury. You're going to take that, and you'll have to put it on either your speed or your luck, weapons, a survivor, and basically when you get five of these, you're going to be removed. You're also incapacitated, which means you're going to have to go ahead and if a zombie comes in, you have to go lay, lay down. You can be revived with a medical card, or if somebody comes and helps you out as well, but you can be killed, and if you're killed, certain things will happen as well. And afterwards, you're going to either find out that you're, you've run out of the deck, and you've lost because the zombie fury has gotten too difficult, because as each of, as this goes on, every single encounter, this is going to move whether you win or lose, and more and more dice are going to come with the zombies, until finally, at the very end here, the zombies will be rolling five dice. At your best, you're going to have a plus ten with ten with three dice. You can still pretty much lose with that, because zombies will get a bonus here as well. A plus three with five dice is probably better than a plus uh, three dice with a plus ten. So just be aware of that. You want to complete it as quick as possible. And coming around the board is very important because you need to unlock the streets. You need to find out in the area what's going on and where all the different pieces are and come back before that occurs or you guys all get incapacitated. And if you can complete that, you're going to actually move on to the next legacy uh, game. You can choose to stop if you want or you can choose to continue the game, but each and every objective will be different and more and more unique. So I'm not going to discuss those, but I think you get the idea. So that's the basic aspect of at least the first portion of this legacy game. Now, remember, if you complete the objectives, and sometimes there's going to be objectives you can complete, but if you don't complete them to a perfect, if you don't complete them perfectionally, 
perfectionly with perfection then you're actually going to be in trouble you can take wounds and other stuff like that you can also use luck on your turn you can use them for any ability provided it says you can sometimes it'll be um moving under a location and actually discarding that adding a new one getting additional bonus before or after combat as well as being able to re-roll dice and all that good stuff as well you'll be able to choose different characters throughout the game depending on what happens as well as maybe new and unique characters will join you now i obviously can't talk a lot about the legacy aspects of the game but i can get into the review for what i've uh what kind of I can tell you. Now I have played uh, three or four different episodes of this um, and we went through it a couple times to make sure we did it right and it all worked very well. I had no issues with the game as far as that was concerned. My only concern was replayability and difference in style of play. So when I first played the playing the scenarios you notice that it's kind of an objective -y based mission where you're going around avoiding the zombies as best as you can trying to get pick too many fights because the zombie rage is going to fill up and this meter is going to eventually get to the point where it's almost nearly impossible to win the game so you have to try and complete it within a certain timeline which is really really unique really cool i like that uh sometimes the cards are going to push you to get into a, a fight uh, motivational cards might have that effect as well and there's going to be different aspects in the game that are going to continue to push you to fight and fight and fight but you got to be careful not to do that as well. Also another thing to note is the art is really really nice in the game. Uh, the luck is nice and interesting as well. The tiles are unique. Everything really works with it. I haven't played a lot of legacy games. In fact I think I've played only two that are semi legacy. This is the first one I've actually played that is really really legacy and I really really enjoyed it. I wasn't really sure going in about re removing cards and whatnot but there's gonna be so many more missions and all these kind of things. I really like that. What I can say about the other legacy different, different aspects of the game is that there is unique different styles of play. It's not always just a objective based finding things which is what I really wanted to see in this game came through which is really really nice I like that as well as changing up the strategies of how it works yeah, I like the fact that you can get different characters you can change your character throughout it and that all of these motivations make a difference throughout the game that's so cool and actually seeing the differences of how your characters play out all by yourself or what you can kind of accomplish throughout the game just by your own specific characters or why they're gonna be why are you doing that it has that kind of dead of winter feel like oh why do you have that aspect with you and you're like oh well i mean i just i'm really nervous about this situation and you can actually explain your story without having to give away what actually happens with your character because that kind of adds to the fun of it as as well the zombie fury tracker is going to get more and more difficult as the game goes on and more and more quicker to need to play it uh we played the second scenario a little faster than the first one because we had all the rules down right as well as the fact that the game was condensed to where you had to um and yeah so it's really really solid first of all as a legacy game i had a lot of fun with this one i don't have a lot to compare it to other than i think brass but this one does a really really good job of keeping you on your toes getting you nervous we've been rolling rolling dice at the very very end of a couple of the games there it was super super close uh, you just feel like you're like on the ground falling down you have no chance of getting up and then all of a sudden something miraculous happens and you're saved again i love that aspect of this game i definitely definitely suggest you should check out this kickstarter campaign if you like legacy games i mean i'm no expert really like you know be, be aware but what i have played of this one i really had a good time and i'm going to continue to play this game when i get if i get my own copy um, i'm going to go ahead and try out the rest of the scenarios because i had a lot of fun and all of my crew that played with me wants to continue to see what happens in this story that progressively gets more and more challenging difficult and all the different stresses of the situation kind of bombard upon you so definitely go ahead and check it out if you'd like in the description below on kickstarter all right guys thanks for watching another unfiltered gamer kickstarter board game review if this sounded interesting to you zombie legacy you like legacy style games and you like zombies definitely do check this one out i had a lot of fun and so did my entire crew so it's actually a review from all of us saying how much we had fun with this one also go ahead and check our website unfilteredgamer.com we'll get some blog posts giveaways kickstarter lists and more and if you would like you can go ahead and check out our affiliates everythingboardgames.com and the giveaway geek we're still giving away games with aeg for space base you can check that out right now the game just came out recently so if you want to win it go ahead and go to the site and pick it up all right guys that's all i got for you this time and as always i appreciate it love you and i will see ya next time.